Chemical and Plastics Corporation for decades before my birth in upstate New York. It takes a master alchemist to create a functional stability between the contamination of genetic mutation, environmental hazards, moral pollution, hormonal imbalance, and toxic emotions from which I struggle from every day. I mean, my daily existence is a battle cave of extreme fluctuations where chaos clubbers apathy, which beats the shit out of depression, which follows irritability, which slams into anger, which eclipses ecstasy, which unfortunately slips through my fingers far too often. And I'm still searching for the drug that can actually trigger the switch, which will allow euphoria its rightful position as a top contender in the war of my emotions. You know, I had my first mood swing while still in the womb when the <laughs> bliss of non-being was shattered by the bull run of my father's bloodline brutally crashing through my fragile endocranial cast. I mean, the inside of my head has been punching the shit out of itself since I was a child. Migraines rebel against my internal landscape, that sewer of muscle, meat, sinew, and blood, which stinks of sulfur and rose water. My brain pan overflows with ancient memories, which have fractured into splintered obsidian, only to be melted into tiny hammers whose thunder eventually roars out of my mouth. And this collection, you can order it, Amazon or the bookstore, yeah, this collection, it commits to the page a sampling of the cries and whispers which batter the inside of my head like fevered ghosts, ghoulishly intoxicated by the primordial essence which has poisoned my very existence. Now, the real intro to this book is called Death Defied by a Thousand Cuts. And all of it's true. I don't write fiction. I adapt my real-life experiences into the written, the spoken word, or, or lyrical content, so bear with me on the brutality of my existence and understand I'm fucking smiling in the end. <laughs> I was born surrounded by death. My mother miscarried before me, after me, and I was born choking the life out of my dead twin brother. At the age of six, my grandmother, a cruel Sicilian witch with long white hair which smelled of camphor, died in bed while sleeping beside me. And for years afterwards, I was chased through the fruit cellar by the evil echo of her heinous cackle. My mother was surrounded by death, too. Eleven brothers and sisters, only three of whom lived to see adulthood. Pneumonia, tuberculosis, cancer, diabetes, stroke. A sick brood, indeed. I spent my formative years in a town where future hillside strangler Kenneth Bianchi conducted his first experiments in lust killing. Month after month, the lurid details of his latest victim, always a pre-adolescent girl my age, would be splayed across the evening news or the front page of the daily paper, grid marking the map of bodies I was convinced I was next to join. Years later, I survived a cocaine-induced killing spree by satanic heartthrob Richard Ramirez, who must have gotten his psychic signals crossed when, instead of sneaking into my bungalow for a few carefree hours of hard metal and soft flesh, took a left turn and missed my apartment by a few blocks. And although at the time I was in the advanced stages of a sick addiction to adrenaline and the endless pull of death's black magnetism, I felt as if I had already spent many a new moon submerged to the Night Stalker's unique charisma. I felt like Richard Ramirez and I, well, that if we weren't, we should have been dating. Now, <laughs> by nature, I am death defiant. I have survived illnesses which, have, which would have killed lesser mortals, burst appendix, infected lymph nodes, E. coli, that was the fucking worst, unintended intraoperative awareness, which means you come awake on the operating table when they're cutting into your stomach looking for some diseased lymph nodes, and uh, that which filled my body with poisoned blood, and I remember at one point I was actually floating above my body, watching and listening, you're paralyzed, you can't speak, and I saw the light, and yeah, I thought it was the light, but in truth it was just the fluorescent lights, which I was floating eye to eye with as a Russian, as a Russian surgeon was viciously butchering me in a scuzzy community hospital in downtown LA anyway, not enough anesthesia will do that. And anesthesia is not a finite science, by the way. I've been stabbed in the gut an eighth of an inch short of pancreatic poisoning. I've been forced into the desert by a Manson wannabe whose idea of true romance was blood stains in the sun-bleached sand. I have been 
bottled in the forehead while doing a free spoken word performance with a full Heineken bottle with such brute force that it broke, but I carried on because I've got a very hard fucking head. <laughs> I spent a charming weekend with a sexy drifter who was arrested three days later and charged with cannibalism. I've been held hostage in snowy woods by a Robert Blake lookalike holding a sawed-off shotgun to my left temple, demanding to be told horrible fairy tales detailing a dozen ways in which I would murder my sisters. That was actually my first storytelling at 12. <laughs> I bullied a chunky gunman to put his peas bag in his pocket, turn around and walk away from me and go shoot somebody uptown from, or from his own neighborhood who had more money. I guilt tripped a knife-wielding crack tweaker to head uptown where people actually were worth sticking up. I've been on two transatlantic flights which were stalled on European runways for hours while bomb-sniffing dogs were sent through the luggage hole to retrieve deadly explosives. And all this shit happened before the mid-80s. <laughs> I taunted death and death taunted back but like a lover who sweet talks you with endless promises of fantastic potential that always comes up short in the goddamn pants you just eventually grow bored with possibility and the attraction you once swooned with now kind of sours and leaves you cold and I mean besides look death is forever I mean life no matter how much you torture yourself or allow others to pick up the pillory or nail you to a post, I mean, it's pretty short. I mean, sea turtles live longer. <laughs> and I'm grateful for every minute that I'm still alive. I've been granted numerous days of execution. I quartered death, who always wins in the end, but truly, I wanted life. I wanted life in the extreme. I needed experiences which would force me to truly appreciate everything. I wanted to take nothing for granted. You know, a friend once said to me, oh, shut the fuck up. You got it made. You've had everything you ever wanted, all the sex you could stomach, all the drugs you could consume, and you're still doing drugs. Cool friends who worship you. What the fuck more do you want? And in truth, I was glutting on everything in a desperate attempt to feel something, anything. It's not that I was born numb to life, but the trauma of my birth, the repeated exposure to the violence of alcoholism from my father and the rage of its impotence, poverty, night terrors, had short-circuited my emotional hard drive before I even hit puberty, and I fought long and hard to get sensation back. And yeah, you got it right, <laughs> Shane. I am a fucking contrarian. I mean, on one hand, I really simply don't give a fuck. <laughs> I just really fucking don't give a fuck. And on, I mean, on one hand, I really am just like a self-centered alien fembot, just soldiering on forward in spite of the imminent collapse of my own physical and mental well-being. I'm chortling sadistically as the planet crumbles. But on the other hand, I'm war-torn, man. I'm like battle-fatigued. I'm deeply wounded by humanity's ignorance, by the stupidity and greed. You know, my compassion is actually the driving force, which insists I give voice to the murdered sons and battered daughters who are forever looking for love in all the wrong faces because they didn't know how to love themselves enough while hating everything and everyone else. You know, most people suffer from having too much emotion. They obsess over minor imperfections, comparing themselves to unrealistic images perpetrated by a celebrity-driven media who value net worth over content or meaning. They panic in the face of disapproval or contradiction, fearing that if they disagree with the status quo or the general consensus or a lover's opinion of right and wrong, that they'll be abandoned and left to fight it out alone. Their insecurity exaggerated by jealousy, which in turn fosters such a desperate need to be understood that they'll waste an exorbitant amount of time and energy pitching temper tantrums, riddled with endless tirades, berating friends and lovers, you just don't get it, you just don't get it, uh, Mr. Special fucking pain. Energy and emotion which could and should be more fruitfully employed elsewhere, like in the written and spoken word where if somebody doesn't want to hear it, you know what? You can fucking leave, man. You don't want to hear it? You got in for free. You can go. Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather take it out here on the stage than on my lovers or friends. They're spared this kind of bullshit. You think they want to hear this crap? I don't think so. Take it to the stage. Exactly. And I take it to the stage because I hope I am the voice for other people that feel the same disappointment and anger and hatred and rage at a world that is fucking itself inside out by a patriarchy that doesn't give a shit about you. That's why I write. That's why I do what I do. This is a piece I wrote, I don't know why.